Hello, good evening. Okay, hello, good evening. We are going to start right now the class for um, modules two for intermediate English. Uh, first, we're going to have a review about gerunds and short responses. And then we are going to have a pronunciation uh, review about T and D. And then we are going to have personality, personality traits. Uh, good evening, Ellie. Good evening, Irma. Good evening, good evening teacher. Okay, thank you for being here. Thank you for being on time. Gracias por venir. Y recuerden, tomorrow is the last class, so we are going to finish exactly uh, in February, okay? Vamos a terminar con febrero. Remember that on Wednesday and Thursday, no classes, right? If you are interested in the next course, in the next classes, si están interesadas, ahí pueden preguntar en el grupo para ver cuándo va a empezar. O creo que les van a avisar a ustedes también, ¿verdad? So, um, I'm going to play this right now. Let me see here. Esto es para que se recuerden de lo que estudiamos la semana pasada, ¿ok? Ok, Judge. Ok, thank you. Let's check it. Disagree. Oh, I don't. I hate working on weekends. Program and stay with us for more explanation. Gerunds. Short responses. Affirmative statements with gerunds. I like traveling. Agree. So do I. Disagree. Oh, I don't. I hate working on weekends. So do I. Really? I like it. I'm good at using a computer. So am I. Gee, I'm not. Negative statements with gerunds. I don't mind working long hours. 
agree. Neither do I. Disagree. Well, I do. I'm not good at selling. Neither am I. I am. I can't stand making mistakes. Neither can I. Oh, I don't mind. Other verbs or phrases followed by gerunds. Love. Enjoy. Be interested in. Let's talk about gerunds. Remember, a gerund is a verb plus ing. Today we will make reference to verbs or phrases that are followed by a gerund. Like, hate, good at, as well as, don't mind, not good at, can stand. So feel free to say, I like eating pizza. She hates cooking. They are good at writing poetry. Or, I don't mind listening to people's problem. He's not good at playing sports. You can't stand cheating on a test. If you notice, you may change the subject. Just make sure you conjugate the verbs properly. Before we go, we want you to look into the chart. Notice we have other verbs or phrases followed by gerunds. Love, enjoy, be interested in. The way to use these verbs and phrases is the same as we did on the previous examples. Short responses with so and neither are ways of agreeing. For example, we use so to agree with a positive statement. I need to find a job. So do I. Neither to agree with a negative statement. I don't like working long hours. Neither do I. Did you realize that with both so and neither, we use the verb from the original statement? Also, keep in mind we place the subject or noun or pronoun after the verb. Hello, did you notice when we have an affirmative statement, we agree by using so plus auxiliary plus subject. And when we have a negative statement, we agree by saying neither plus auxiliary plus subject. For example, if I say to you, I like reading books, you may answer by saying, so do I. Or if I say to you, I don't mind talking to him, you may do by saying, neither do I. As said in the explanation, there are some verbs that are always followed by gerunds. We will share them with you so you may practice. Before we go, we want you to agree on the following statements. I love hiking. I'm not good at swimming. As always, respond on our discussion box. Okay, so that was the review of the things that we studied last, last time. Okay, thank you for being here, Kimberly. Now we are going to... Yes, Irma, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. El, el ING siempre se le agrega cuando estoy haciendo una acción. Sí, siempre se le agrega cuando está haciendo una acción. Por ejemplo, estoy cocinando, ¿verdad? I am cooking, ¿verdad? Estoy uh -huh. caminando, I am walking. Pero en este uh -huh. caso, eh, el ING se agrega porque hay unos verbos que después de esos verbos eh, se escribe con ING. Por ejemplo, me gusta como este que está aquí, ¿verdad? I love watching series on Netflix. Aquí no quiere decir que yo lo esté haciendo en este momento, sino que aquí uh -huh. estamos, el watching es un gerundio, por eso no es el, el, el ING que usted conoce, que es cuando está haciendo en ese momento, sino que aquí eh, se traduce como, a mí me gusta ver, a mí me gusta ver series uh -huh. en Netflix. Entonces, uh -huh. ¿y por qué le pongo ING? Porque después del verbo love, para me gusta, ¿verdad? Ver. Así se escribe. Después del verbo love va el verbo watch, pero con ing. Esa es la... O sea, la... Que Ajá. Depende de los verbos que vaya a poner. Uh -huh. Depende de los verbos que vayamos a usar. Por ejemplo, de, de odiar, ¿verdad? O que no me gusta, ¿verdad? I hate doing the dishes. Con este verbo también no es con todos, ¿verdad? Es una lista algo larga, pero podemos empezar con algunos. Por ejemplo, love, hate. I hate doing the dishes. No me gusta lavar trastes. En inglés se dice do the dishes. I hate doing the dishes. Ajá, uh -huh, exactly. I love reading books. Me gusta leer libros. 
no quiere decir que en este momento esté leyendo un libro, ¿verdad? Pero que me gusta en general, ¿verdad? I am good. I am good at es una expresión, no es un verbo en sí, ¿verdad? Es una expresión que después de esa expresión eh, se le pone al verbo ing. Por ejemplo, I am good at cooking. Soy bueno cocinando, ¿verdad? I am good at. So después de good at, ocupamos un ing, un gerund, un gerundio. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you for your question. And also we have here gerunds, right? A gerund is not the present continuous. El, como aquí dice, ¿verdad? el gerundio no es el presente continuo, que es el verbo que ocupamos para, para decir que estamos haciendo ya las cosas, ¿verdad? El gerund o el gerundio, it can be the subject of a sentence. Puede ser el sujeto de una oración, puede ser the object of a verb, el objeto de un verbo, or the object of a preposition, o el objeto de una preposición. Quiere decir que por esa razón los escribimos así, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, taking classes online is a challenge. Tomar clases en línea es un reto, ¿verdad? Taking classes online is a challenge. Working as a teacher can be stressful. Trabajar como maestro puede ser estresante. ¿verdad? Entonces, trabajar no se dice to work, ¿verdad? Podemos decirlo también to work as a teacher, pero también podemos ocupar los gerunds. Es algo normal que vamos a ver en libros, que vamos a ver eh, cuando hablan las personas. Entonces, vamos a oír que ellos dicen talking, taking classes online is a challenge. Y ahí están usando el gerund como un sujeto. Como un objeto de un verbo, se le dice objeto de un verbo porque... Como ya dijimos, ¿va? después de ese verbo, tenemos que poner el, el otro verbo, ¿verdad? En, en ING. Entonces, ahí se les dice que son objeto de un verbo. Por ejemplo, I enjoy spending time with friends. Me, me gusta pasar tiempo con amigos. I enjoy spending time with friends. Or I can stand, ¿verdad? No soporto. I can stand living with messy people. No soporto vivir con gente desordenada, ¿verdad? I can't stand living with messy people. Y también pueden ser objetos de preposición. Después de algunas preposiciones, van eh, gerundios, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, la preposición at. I'm good at swimming. I'm interested in, ¿verdad? In es otra preposición. Entonces, como va después de la preposición, tenemos que escribirlo con ing porque para formar el gerundio, ¿verdad? I am interested in learning how to use Excel. Estoy interesado en aprender cómo usar Excel. Entonces, es un poco complicado porque tenemos que saber primero las preposiciones, pero una vez que ya las sabemos y practicamos, se nos va a ser fácil, ¿verdad? Igual con los verbos que van después, como enjoy, stand, hate, love. Vamos a aprender algunos de ellos y los vamos a poder utilizar. O para sujetos de una oración, ¿verdad? Solo es práctica. Esto es nada más reglas, ¿verdad? The rules. Para que ustedes puedan diferenciar el present continuous against the gerunds. So, aquí están los gerunds y las short responses. Lo que acabamos de ver en el video, aquí está, ¿verdad? So, aquí está uh, la fórmula para escribirlo. Subject plus verb or preposition plus gerund plus, plus complement. I love watching movies. I hate cleaning the bathroom. I'm good at speaking French. Y a subject plus verb or preposition plus gerund plus complement, right? Estas están en negativo, ¿verdad? I don't mind taking care of babies. I don't mind. Mind es el, el verbo y después de mind va el gerundio, ¿verdad? I'm not good at. At es la preposición, ¿verdad? Entonces, por eso se le pone dense. I'm not good at dancing. No soy bueno bailando. I can't stand being with noisy people. No soporto estar con gente ruidosa, ¿verdad? I can't stand being with noisy people. So, uh, if we say something like that, si nosotros decimos algo y para decir que yo también, ya aprendimos, ¿verdad? Que para estar de acuerdo con alguien, decimos so do I. Or so am I, right? Dependiendo si estoy utilizando el verbo to be o algún otro verbo. O neither do I, ¿verdad? Uh, neither do I es cuando yo digo que algo no me gusta. Entonces, a mí tampoco se dice neither do I. Neither am I or neither can I. Aquí están las, las oraciones. ¿verdad? I don't mind taking care of babies, neither do I. 
do porque es con, con uh, taking care, ¿verdad? I am not good at dance. Y como es I am, el que está diciendo no soy, ¿verdad? Bueno, bailando, I'm not good at dancing, neither am I. Y como aquí dice can't en negativo, vamos a usar can, ¿verdad? I can't stand being with noisy people, neither can I, ¿verdad? Entonces, this is, esto es para estar de acuerdo en forma afirmativa y esto es para estar de acuerdo en forma negativa. Y esto es para no estar de acuerdo. For example, if I tell you, I love watching movies, me gusta ver películas, pero a usted no, como digo, a mí no, I don't, right? I don't, I don't love watching movies. I hate cleaning the bathroom, odio limpiar el baño. Really? I like it. A mí me gusta, a mí me gusta limpiar el baño, ¿verdad? Really, I like it. Or, I am good at speaking French. Yo soy bueno hablando el francés, hablando francés. Or, I'm not. I'm not good at, right? Entonces, podemos ahí estar en desacuerdo. Y lo opuesto sería este, estar en desacuerdo cuando algo nos dice que I don't mind taking care of babies. I do, ¿verdad? Este, ahí podemos estar en desacuerdo. I'm not good at dancing. Well, I am. I can't stand being with noisy people. Oh, I don't mind. So, ahí podemos ver las dos respuestas, ¿verdad? Other verbs or phrases followed by gerunds. Like, enjoy, be interested in. So, estos son uh, verbos o frases que siguen gerundios, ¿verdad? I like spending time with my family. I enjoy visiting natural places. I am interested in traveling to Dubai, etc. Uh, oh, this is pronunciation. Eso es pronunciación. Acerca, este es uh, unreleased and released T and D. So, este es un, no sé si ya vieron este video en la plataforma o no sé si ya este, terminaron la plataforma. Si tienen algún problema, díganme, porque mañana es el último día para terminar la plataforma. Entonces, esto aquí lo explica ella. Estos son sonidos, ¿verdad? Siempre que vean estas rayitas aquí, son sonidos. La T y la D, aquí son sonidos. Entonces, eh, vamos a ver eh, nada más esto porque aquí lo menciona, ¿verdad? Hi, everyone. We want you to get better on your pronunciation. Please listen and practice as many times as you need to. Pronunciation. Unreleased and released. T and D. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice when the sound t or d at the end of a word is followed by a consonant, it is unreleased. When it is followed by a vowel sound, it is released. Unreleased. She's not good at math and science. I hate working on Sundays. You need to manage money well. Released. He's not a good artist. They really hate it. I need a cup of coffee. On your own, complete the following sentences and say them out loud. Watch your pronunciation. Remember, the more you practice, the better you get. Okay, so actually this is just pronunciation, right? And um, it depends on you, right? It depends on how you, how you uh, want to sound, como le gustaría escucharse but we are going to practice okay slowly so this is on release and release como que eh, not good right aquí como que casi no se escucha quiere decir la t no les vamos a decir she's not good porque te, tendríamos que hacer como una pausa verdad she's not good at dealing with stress entonces como que se unen verdad she's not good not not good She's not good at dealing, at dealing. Entonces se une la T con la D, ¿verdad? She's not good at dealing with stress. I hate working. I hate working. Entonces aquí la T casi no se, no se escucha. I hate. Pero sí podemos enfatizarla si queremos, ¿verdad? I hate working on Sundays. I need to. I need. No, no decimos I need to. Sino que es una D que casi no se, no se escucha, ¿verdad? You, I need to manage money well. En cambio, así, aquí sí, ¿verdad? Eh, sí se libera más, por eso sí se released. He's not a, he's not a good artist. They really hate it. I need a, I need a cup of coffee, right? So let's see, let's practice. Let's see. 
Irma, can you read uh, the unreleased sentences? Puede leer que dice aquí unreleased. Estas tres oraciones, por favor, Irma. Okay. She is not good at dealing with stress. Mm -hmm. I hate working on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You need to manage money well. Thank you. Very good. And release. Vamos a ver, Christian, can you read the released sentences? Okay, teacher. Uh, he's not a good at arts. They really hate it. Hate it. Hate it. I need a cup of coffee. Very good. He's not a good artist, right? They really hate it. I need a cup of coffee. Very good. So, para sonar, eso es para sonar más, with more fluency, con más fluidez. So, Connect the speeches. Exactly, exactly. Very good. He's not a good artist. So, if you have something to read, si tienen algo para leer en casa, pues lo pueden así practicar en voz alta, ¿verdad? Okay. I did this uh, exercise with some students before you. And actually, I think it is really easy, but some of them ha had it like really, really, it was kind of difficult for them, for some of them. So we are going to check if it is difficult for you or if it is easy. Vamos a ponerlo una vez. Este es un listening. Y vamos a ver si pueden escuchar la idea, okay? Es, is, this listening is, uh, it says working my ideal career, right? My ideal career. Porque estamos hablando de jobs, we are talking about professions, etc. So we are, what we are going to do is just to listen to three people. Vamos a escuchar tres personas. Alex, Evelyn, and Edward. And they are going to say if they are good architect, accountant, or teacher. For example, and Alex, and we are going to listen uh, reasons why they think they're good at, uh, at, uh, at being an architect, or an accountant or a teacher. The same with Evelyn. Uh, we are going to listen to her about banker, doctor or lawyer, and Edward, marine biologist, songwriter, or flight attendant. Entonces, quiero que me digan eh, cuál es el trabajo que ellos eligen, que sería ideal para ellos, y por qué. Okay, so let's listen. Six. Listening. My ideal career. Part A. Listen to people talk about the kind of work they are looking for. Then check each person's ideal job. 1. Alex. What kind of job do I have in mind? Well, I don't want a regular 9 to 5 job, and eventually I'd like to work for myself. I'm good at drawing and I think it would be fun to design people's homes and businesses. I've actually been reading blogs about designing, and I'm looking into programs at universities. That sounds great. Have you tried designing anything? Well, yes. I've actually done some drawings recently of my dream house. Would you like to see them? Definitely. 2. Evelyn What kind of career are you planning for yourself? I don't know. I think I'd like to have a job where I can help people. Everybody else in my family is in business. And I'm not good at selling or negotiating. It's just not for me. I know I'd love working overseas, though. Maybe in a children's hospital in a developing country. But that's a long way away. I have to get into medical school first, and that's not going to be easy. 3. Edward so, what kind of job are you looking for? Well, I haven't made up my mind. I enjoy working with people, and I love traveling. I don't want a job where I'm stuck in an office all day. Are you interested in working in business? That's where you can sometimes make good money. I'm not really interested in making a lot of money at this point in my life. I just want to get out and see the world. I'll worry about money later. Okay, did you get it or do you want to listen to it again? Mm, just one more time, teacher, please. 
Okay, I will activate the subtitles. Okay. Okay, and you will be able to listen, okay? Page 66, exercise 6, part B. Listen again. Write two reasons each person gives for his or her ideal job. 1. Alex. What kind of job do I have in mind? Well, I don't want a regular 9 to 5 job, and eventually I'd like to work for myself. I'm good at drawing, and I think it would be fun to design people's homes and businesses. I've actually been reading blogs about designing, and I'm looking into programs at universities. That sounds great. Have you tried designing anything? Well, yes. I've actually done some drawings recently of my dream house. Would you like to see them? Definitely. 2. Evelyn What kind of career are you planning for yourself? I don't know. I think I'd like to have a job where I can help people. Everybody else in my family is in business. And I'm not good at selling or negotiating. It's just not for me. I know I'd love working overseas, though. Maybe in a children's hospital in a developing country. But that's a long way away. I have to get into medical school first, and that's not going to be easy. 3. Edward So what kind of job are you looking for? Well, I haven't made up my mind. I enjoy working with people, and I love traveling. I don't want a job where I'm stuck in an office all day. Are you interested in working in business? That's where you can sometimes make good money. I'm not really interested in making a lot of money at this point in my life. I just want to get out and see the world. I'll worry about money later. Okay. So I guess that's it. Let me see here. So tell me, um, Alex, number one, what does he want to be, an architect? an accountant, or a teacher? So, an architect. architect. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, an architect. Why? He mentioned okay. that he designed uh, the house or his dreams. Yeah. Exactly. He likes to design, right? Design of his dream. And also, what else? Hmm. He is good He's, at? Um, drawing. At drawing, exactly. He's good at drawing. Perfect. Evelyn, she wants to be a banker, a doctor, or a lawyer? A doctor. Yep. A doctor, okay. exactly. And where would you like to, to, to work? Because she loves to help people and all... All her family is in business, and she's not good with selling. Exactly. <laughs> selling something, yeah, for that reason. Yeah, she's not good at sales, and she would like to help people, right? Kids, right, in a uh, development country. And Edward, he wants to be a marine biologist, songwriter, or fly attendant? Fly attendant. Fly attendant, very good. Why? Because and um, he likes travel. Traveling. Exactly, he likes to travel, right? He likes to travel. He likes to. He doesn't want to be in an office, and he wants to travel around the world. He wants to see the world, right? And he will worry later about the money. Okay, very good, perfect. It was not that that difficult. So uh, tomorrow, mañana, since we are uh, talking about jobs. I will, it will be up to you. Se las voy a dejar a ustedes la última, la última actividad. Um, do you want to take a career test in English, right? Or do you want to have a job interview? Which one would you like to have tomorrow? Or both? <laughs> um, both of them. It could be interesting. <laughs> Yes, because tomorrow we can 
we can have a, a career test. So you can have like your vacation. We will we will do it all together in English, right? Since we are working in, on talking about jobs and everything. And probably we will, uh, after that, we can talk about what will be uh, our ideal job or why do we think that that, that will be our ideal job. So I will bring it tomorrow. I just wanted to know if you were interested in doing that or or the other one. Okay, very good. Now, also tomorrow we are going to talk about a different skills, right? And adjectives. It says, which of these adjectives are positive or negative? For example, creative. I think it is positive, right? It's, it says P here, creative. Uh, impatient for you is negative or positive? Negative. Negative, right? Very good. Um, yeah, in some ways it can be it can be negative. Critical is mm -hmm. negative or positive? So it depends, I think. It depends, yes, because uh, sometimes it's good to be critical, right? It can be it can be positive sometimes. Level headed, is it negative or positive? Oh well, <laughs> maybe so. It depends too. Level. What is the meaning of level headed? ¿Qué es level headed? ¿Qué significa level headed? Poco saludable. Mm, no. For example, Irma, if I tell you, Irma, you are level headed. Very good. You are. Uh, like a sensible, like um, realistic sometimes. Exactly, exactly. Level es como nivelado y head de cabeza, o sea, como que piensa bien con la cabeza, ¿verdad? Que es... Eh... So, but it depends on the context because sometimes in many jobs uh, you have to be empathetic with someone else. And uh -huh. this kind of person is like a, they don't have the sensitive to be something like that. Exactly, yes, you have to be empathetic, exactly. Exactly. So that that could be a positive, um, a positive adjective, right? Level-headed, right? Alguien que piensa de una manera lógica, verdad? Level-headed. Disorganized. Is it good or bad? Is it positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Disorganized, right? Very good. Moody. Moody for you is uh pos positive or negative? Moody, what is the meaning of moody? ¿Qué significa moody? Moody. You're a moody person. If someone tells you that, you're a moody oh. person. Okay, is it true? But don't say me. Don't don't tell. Don't tell, <laughs> don't tell me. <laughs> don't tell me. So it is like uh, you are angry all the time. Um, you get the lost. You, you get the control with uh, facility, yeah. Yes, you lose control. You are like angry, right? Like, mm, whatever. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Why I came here. Everything, right? It's moody, right? So probably it's, it's negative, right? Probably. Yeah, it's negative. Negative. Bueno, eso dicen como que las personas malhumoradas así, pero después de los 25 uno ya entiende el porqué. Yes, it's normal. That's normal, right? Exactly. Efficient. We have efficient. That is negative or positive? Positive. Positive, right? Efficient. Efficient. Punctual. Negative positive. or positive? positive? Positive. Yeah. You have to be po you have to be punctual in your job. Yeah. Forgetful. Yeah. What is the meaning of forgetful? Olvidadizo. Olvidadizo. You forget everything, right? So that is. <laughs> oh, Es cierto, pero no me lo diga. <laughs> is it is it positive or negative? It's negative. Negative. Yes, in different aspects, is is negative. Reliable. What is reliable? 
Analyst. Reliable can be probably the opposite of forgetful, right? El opuesto True. de forgetful. Como que reliable, que es confiable, que yo sé que lo va a hacer, ¿verdad? Lo va a hacer porque I trust you, right? Yo sé que me va a hacer las tareas, yo sé que you are reliable. So es confiable. Gener generous, yes, it's positive, exactly, positive. Generous is positive or negative? Positive. Positive, yes. It can be positive, yes, sometimes. Short temper. <laughs> what is short oh, temper? Yes. Uh, temperamento. Por... Exactly, <laughs> huh? Yo, personas <laughs> yo, yo, <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes. It's like short temper. Como dice, de, de mecha corta, dicen, ¿verdad? De mal genio, exactly. Short temper. So that's negative or positive? Yeah, negative. negative. Oh, negative. Exactly. Uh, yeah, sometimes uh, it is it is kind of bad to be short tempered. Hard working. Positive. Positive, positive right? Hard working. Que trabaja duro, right? Hard working. And strict. Negative or positive? Positive. Yeah, positive. I guess that sometimes we need someone who is really strict, right? But we don't have to uh, be over strict, right? Like, like to overreact on that. Very good. Now, let's see. Listen to four conversations and check the adjective that best describes each, each person. So, vamos a escuchar cuatro conversaciones again. So, uh, we're going to check the adjective. For example, a boss, un jefe, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál es la, el adjetivo que lo describe? Created, forgetful, or serious. Number two, we have a co-worker. The co-worker could be unfriendly, generous or strange a teacher in the conversation they are going to mention that the teacher is moody patient or hardworking. number four a relative un familiar uh, verdad short tempered disorganized or reliable so we are going to listen right now and you will tell me i will pause it after each conversation a lot of money at this point in my life I just want to get out and see the world. I'll worry about money later. Page 67. Exercise 8. Word power. Personality traits. Part C. Listen to four conversations. Then check the adjective that best describes each person. 1. A boss. How do you like your new boss? She's okay. I just wish she'd learn to lighten up a little. What do you mean? Oh, she never enjoys a joke. She never laughs. It's hard to even get a smile out of her. Two. Okay, number one. What is the best adjective for this boss? Mm, serious. Serious, right? Because she never laughs, right? Like you're... Hey, how are you? And the boss is like, good. <laughs> Very good. Bye. <laughs> and and she never laughs, right? It's really serious. Very good. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, yeah, some people are like that. Some people. A co-worker, yeah. right? Unfriendly, generous, or strange. Let's listen. A co-worker. Look what Mary gave me. Isn't this a great book? Yeah, it is. Mary's so sweet. She's always giving her friends and coworkers presents, and she's so helpful with her time. Okay, uh, what is the best uh, adjective for the coworker? Generous. Generous, right? Because she gives a book, right? Yes, that's being generous. And also, they mention other positive adjectives. Then the teacher, right? Let's listen to it. Three. A teacher. What do you think of the new French teacher? Well, she's kind of strange. She's happy one minute, and the next minute she's not. Okay, what is the best uh, adjective for the teacher? So, it, it is hard. Uh, I think that it's like a moody. 
moody, right? Because she changes yeah. her mood exactly. It's happy one minute and then angry at the, at the next one, right? Very good. And a relative. Let's listen to it. Four, a relative. Hey, what's wrong? I'm fed up with my brother. It seems like he's always angry at me about something. Really? Yeah, he gets upset so easily. I don't know what's the matter with him. Okay, how is the relative? A short temper, disorganized, or reliable? Um, short tempered. Yeah, it can be short tempered because he's angry all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. Perfect. So let's see right now. Let me see here. So yesterday we were talking about gerunds. Let me see here. I guess that we will do this one. And then if we still have time, we will do two more. Yes. Only these ones. So avoid. Uh, so after these verbs, we need to write a gerund, right? So, for example, what is the meaning of avoid? ¿Qué significa avoid? Evitar. Avoid. Evitar. Can you give me one sentence with avoid, Elida? I can avoid falling in love with you. Something like that. I can avoid, exactly, falling like a song, right? Ah, uh, like a Elvis Presley song, yeah. Elvis Presley, exactly. <laughs> And so it's the same, right? I can't avoid falling in love with you. Exactly. So as you can see, avoid is a verb, right? And after the verb, we need to write a gerund. Let's see. Uh, consider. Christian, can you give me one sentence with consider? Considerar. Y después un gerund. Christian, are you there? No? Okay, very good. So she considers... Uh, or we can write, she had, right? She had considered... Quitting, right? Many times. Ella ha considerado renunciar a su trabajo muchas veces, right? She had considered quitting her job many times. Let's see. Irma, stop or quit is the same, right? Give me one sentence with stop. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am going sit in the class. I am gora. I am gora. Gora sit in the class. In the class. In Spanish. Ah, uh, yo soy bueno estando tranquilo en clase. <laughs> Ajá. Ah, I, yo soy buena estando tranquila en clase. Ah, okay. <laughs> but in this case, uh, una, oración, una oración con el verbo stop, parar. Stop. Aiding. I can't stop eating. eating. Oh, okay. I can't stop eating. Very good. No puedo parar de comer. Very good. Perfect. I can't stop eating. Perfect. And um, let's see. Kimberly with finish. I finish <clears throat> fishing. 
I finish fishing. Like this? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Terminé de pescar. I finished fishing. Very good. Perfect. So, um, as you can see, these verbs, uh, we need to write it with a gerund after that. Postpone, right? Another one. He postponed. Postpone. Um, meeting with his friends. Can't help, right? Sorry. I can't help working I, long out. Uh huh. I postponed my travel my traveling for the Sunday. Very good. I postponed traveling on Sunday. Very good. I postponed traveling. I can I can help working long hours, right? Very good. And spend, como pasar el tiempo. I spend cleaning the house the whole weekend. So as you can see, I spent cleaning the house the whole weekend. These are some uh, verbs. For example, consider quitting, right? The verb and the gerund. Stop eating, right? Finished fishing. Postpone meeting, right? Can help working. And Span cleaning. So the verb plus the gerund. Let's see if we have something else here. Ah, oh, it says complete these sentences with the words and phrases in the box. Use gerunds. We have commute, learn languages, start her own business, use a computer, work under pressure, under pressure, work with a team. So Teresa enjoys being a journalist. She has to write a new story every day, but she doesn't mind. What would be the best option for this one? ¿Cuál sería la mejor opción? Commute, learn languages, start her own business, use a computer, work under pressure, or work with a team. I guess work under pressure, right? Work under pressure would be the best option. So let's see, we, ya vamos a ver cuál es la respuesta. Ichiro is a novelist, but he hates. Okay, Ichiro is a novelist. Es un novelista, ¿verdad? He hates commute, learn languages, start her own business, use a computer, or work with a team. ¿Cuál sería la mejor opción? He hates... So he's a writer, right? Probably use a computer, right? Probably. When usually works alone all day, but he enjoys. Usually works alone all day. Usualmente work with a team. Work with a team, exactly. She he enjoys work working, right? Working with a with a team. Yeah. Ellen worked for a large company, but she's interested in? Start her own business. Start her own business. Let's see. And Carlos has to use Portuguese and Japanese at work, but he's not very good at? Learning languages. Learning languages. And the last one, Cindy has to drive to work every day, but she doesn't like? Commuting, right? Commute. Yeah. Commute is yeah. like like to work, right? To, to to drive to your job. So that would be the these options. Let's see. Working under pressure, using a computer, working with a team, starting her own business, learning languages, and commuting. Very good. Perfect. Let's see. I think we still have 10 minutes. Okay, so for tomorrow. I will explain to you the last homework for tomorrow. It says here. 
Esta es la última actividad. So we are going to prepare an activity where if it's not a CV, it's not a curriculum, no es un currículum, but prepare your personal uh, profile, job profile, right? With your name, skill, job preferences, if you want to. Si ustedes quieren, lo pueden presentar. Si no, no, ¿verdad? Y respondan estas preguntas. Do you enjoy helping people? Do you have any social skills? Do you like to work alone? Do you yes. like technology? Yes. <laughs> yes. Or do you like technology? So try to answer this. And with this information, we are going to uh, practice tomorrow with with a conversation, right? With a conversation like be, uh, having an interview, a job interview. Y además de eso, vamos a hacer el examen eh, como el, el career test. El career test. Para eso también vamos a necesitar vocabulario, ¿verdad? Para el... Para el... Para el, the conversation tomorrow for the interview and the career test. So we are going to check some personality traits. This will be the last activity. For example, creative, as we already checked in the last exercise. Creative is someone who is able to have great ideas and create original things. So probably you are creative. Impatient, right? Someone who doesn't like to wait or tolerate mistakes. Critical, someone who tends to say that someone or something is bad or wrong. Level-headed is a person who is calm and able to deal easily with difficult situations. Disorganized, right? As we can see in the picture, someone who doesn't plan or put things in the correct place. Moody, right? Someone who changes from sad to happy or from nice to rude easily or without any reason. That is called, what is the name of, of that syndrome? Um... I forgot it. About teacher. <laughs> yes, I forgot the, the name of that in psychology. Como le dicen esas personas? Bipolar is bipolar. Mm -hmm. bipolar. Bipolar, yes. They are bipolar, right? Probably. Efficient, right? Someone who works quickly in an organized way and usually gets the results that are expected. Punctual, right? A person who arrives at places or does things on time. Forgetful, a person who usually forgets things or does not have a good memory. Reliable, someone who you can trust or believe because he or she is responsible and honest. Generous, someone who likes giving things to others or helping them without expecting anything in return. And short temper, right? A person who gets angry or irritated easily. Ah, we have also hard working, right? A person who puts a lot of effort and dedication into his or her work. Strict, someone who is inflexible or tends to follow and make others follow rules without accepting any changes. And this will be some of the things that we are going to study. We are going to use for tomorrow, right? For uh, the next vocabulary that we are going to check. Also, we have more traits here. Aquí tenemos más. Si ustedes lo quieren usar para la conversación de mañana, that would be the, I think, the, the last conversation we are going to have. We have absent-minded, careful, charming, confident, creative, critical, efficient, focused, careless, arrogant, unconfident, uncreative, tolerant, and incompetent, right? Like the, the opposite, right? Forgetful, reliable, right? Friendly, unfriendly. Generous, selfish. Hardworking, lazy. Honest, dishonest. Intelligent, unintelligent. Interesting, boring, right? Kind, mean. Level-headed, moody. Nice, bad-tempered. Organized, disorganized. Outgoing, shy. Patient, impatient. Polite, rude. Punctual, unpunctual. Quiet, restless. Sensitive, insensitive. Smart, dumb. Sophisticated, vulgar. Strict, flexible. Strong, weak. 
Do you have any question about these personality traits? Preguntas de este vocabulario que vamos a usar mañana? Mm, no, teacher. Okay, any pronunciation? Or anything? No? Okay, mm, perfect. No, well, not for me. Not for you, okay. And for the rest, Irma, Kimberly, Christian, alguna palabra? O alguna pronunciación? Eh, eh, solo mi pregunta es de, de la, la conversación sobre qué la vamos a hacer. I can be um, a job interview. Puede ser una entrevista de trabajo. Alguien va, alguien, usted puede ser la entrevistada y otra persona la va a entrevistar, ¿verdad? Ahí vamos a ver cómo podemos cambiar o si podemos cambiar de uno a otro. Por ejemplo, yo le puedo decir, ok, Irma, yo la voy a entrevistar y vamos a hacer como que estamos en, en un trabajo, ¿verdad? Usted va a aplicar para un trabajo. Y usted me puede decir para qué tipo de trabajo. Y entonces okay. yo le voy a decir, ok, Irma, uh, tell me about yourself. What, how is your personality? ¿Cómo es su personalidad? Y usted, oh, I am confident because I like to do the, the, the things like this. I am very punctual. I am always on time, soy puntual, ¿verdad? I am hardworking, I like to work a lot, I am honest, I am friendly, I am organized with my job, y así usted va agregando ¿verdad? todos estos personality traits a la conversación, además que va a decir qué es lo que ha hecho, por eso es que les decía que apuntaran como qué es lo que ha hecho, como I have studied this, or I have, I have experience in working, in cooking, or I don't know, Uh, alguna experiencia ¿verdad? que haya tenido y eso y eso sería lo que vamos a, a hacer en, en la conversación verdad como una entrevista de trabajo ok una consulta dicho yes. a qué se refiere con smart ahí en la tablet smart y dumb uh, dumb oh, is the opposite of smart verdad smart es se lo voy a decir aquí Intel, como alguien inteligente, pero no de que sabe mucho, sino que como smart, de, de, de listo, ¿verdad? Que alguien que es listo, no de que sea como que memorice cosas, no que smart. Y dumb es lo opuesto, ¿verdad? Dumb. Dumb es alguien que no es tan listo, ¿verdad? That would be the, the meaning. Okay. Y weak. Weak, weak es, by strong es fuerte, ¿verdad? Y weak es... Débil. Débil, exactly. So strong es lo opuesto de weak. Fuerte, débil. Okay. Another one? Because we have a lot, right? We have also the ones that I already mentioned, right? You can create, uh, we, you can add this one, creative, forgetful. If you think that you are forgetful, right? Entonces vamos, um, vamos a hacer eso y traten de contestar estas preguntas, ¿verdad? Si traen su, su como currículum, ¿verdad? En inglés, lo pueden mostrar. Y esto, ¿verdad? Do you enjoy helping people? Estas son las preguntas que podemos hacer en la conversación. Pueden crear, uh, podemos agregar otras, ¿verdad? Pero vamos a hacer esto como Do you enjoy helping people? Do you have any social skills? Do you like work alone? Do you like technology? Podemos cambiarlo de, dependiendo de la conversación, ¿verdad? Que usted vaya a aplicar para un trabajo de, de cocinera o que cocinero o un trabajo de ingeniero o un trabajo de... No sé. Uh, we have a lot of jobs, right? Uh, so that's what we are going to do tomorrow. And we are going to to practice this, right? We have here more, right? Efficient, friendly, hardworking, level-headed, right? Patient, all of that. And we can say this, right? Unfriendly. Uh, if, pueden buscar también los, los opuestos, ¿verdad? Efficient, disorganized, right? Porque uh, pueden decir, en, en lugar de, say, de decir, I am efficient, uh, you can say, I am not disorganized, right? Yo no soy desorganizada, I am not lazy, no soy perezoso, ¿verdad? Porque hardworking is the opposite of lazy, right? Interesting, boring, right? Friendly, unfriendly. 
patient in patient. Así que vamos a, a tratar de hacer una conversación así de como entrevista y vamos a hacer el, el career test. Do you have any question about your, your homework? Preguntas? No questions? Okay. No, sir. Oh, every, everything's clear. Okay, perfect. So bring, uh, tomorrow bring pizza, bring something to eat because we'll be the last class for this module. Congratulations. Felicidades por su trabajo y por su esfuerzo porque no es fácil estar aquí a las 10 de la noche aprendiendo inglés. Así que I will see you tomorrow, okay? In the last class. See you tomorrow, teacher. See you tomorrow. Have a nice night. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye.